Avoid missing a pediatric elbow fracture. A child may have an elbow pain after a fall. The x-ray may appear negative for a fracture. Some of the fractures around the elbow can be hidden and easy to miss. Doctors may not be familiar with reading or interpretation of elbow x-rays in a child. These doctors can be worried about missing a fracture with an injury that may cause undesirable outcome to the patient. In this video, I'm going to try to explain step by step the important points when you look at an x-ray of the elbow in a child. The first thing you need to do, you need to obtain a good quality high definition x-ray properly aligned. See figure 8 or hourglass in the lateral x-ray as you can see here. If you don't see the figure 8, then repeat taking the x-ray. The second thing you need to do is to look at the ossification centers. Find the ossification centers around the elbow, both in the AP and lateral views. And remember, the cry toe, one, three, five, seven, nine, eleven. You need to know the age of the patient and the exact age and the order of the development of the ossification centers. Look for a fracture or abnormality on the x-ray. Look for an ossification center that you expect to be there, but it's not in the x-ray. You can't find it. Look inside the joint for medial epicondyle fracture that's trapped. 3. Look at the bone itself. Look at the surface of the bone. Look at cortical breaks subtle or unusual angulations of the bone. Look at the radial head, the olecranon, the supracondylar area, or the lateral condylar area. These are common areas to have an elbow fracture in a child. Number four, look at the fat pads. If there is no visible fracture, and the x-rays appear normal, look at the fat pads and the displacement of the fat pads. The anterior fat pad displacement is called the sale sign. If you see the posterior fat pad, it means an occult fracture that we cannot find. There are two fat pads, anteriorly and posteriorly. The anterior fat pad is visible as a dark area and it is attached to the anterior humerus. The posterior fat pad is not visible, it's deep, it's hidden, and the effusion displaces it, and if you see it, then it means there is a fracture. Number five, look at the capitellum. God created the capitellum first and everything around it later. Capitillum is the first ossification center to develop. It is a great landmark to help in the diagnosis of elbow trauma. Everything leads to the capitillum. The anterior humeral line should intersect the middle third of the capitillum. Make sure you have figure 8 in the x-ray, so the x-ray will be well aligned and accurate, otherwise repeat it before you draw that line. If the anterior humor line does not intersect the middle third of the capitellum, then the patient will have a supracondylar fracture. The radiocapitellar line is a line from the radial neck and it should bisect the capitellum in all views, regardless of the age of the patient. The radial neckline is better than the radial shaft line, which may bisect the capitellum despite subtle subluxation of the radial head. 
This is a normal line, and this is an abnormal line due to anterior subluxation of the radial head. This radiohumeral line is very important in the diagnosis of Montagia fracture with subtle proximal ulnar fracture and radial head subluxation. It is a key in the diagnosis of radial head position, normal or abnormal. Early diagnosis of Montagia by utilizing this line can avoid a major morbidity to the patient, which may require major reconstructive surgery to the elbow. Capitellum also can be a great landmark to diagnose transepiphyseal separation of the humerus. The olecranon moves posteriorly and medially. The elbow appears dislocated, but the radiocapitular line remains the same. It's uninterrupted, both in an AP and lateral view. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.